Hello and welcome to the 41st video in this series programming a chess engine in C. So we'll carry on with our implementation of the make move. We've got now the clear piece, add piece and move piece functions complete. And this video we're going to go through the whole make move function. The following video will do the whole take move function. And as I've done with the previous functions, I'll go through it bit by bit. So let's make a start. The first thing we're going to do is have a look at the definition of the function. And the function returns an integer type, because what we're going to do with make move, we're going to return false, so zero, if after making the move, the side that has made the move is left themselves in check, because that's obviously then an illegal move, because the side to move would then be able to capture the king, which you can't, if you're up on the rules in chess, you'll know this, but if you're not, if you can't make a move that leaves your own king in check, so if your king is attacked, so you're, which is called you're in check, and you make a move that doesn't get him out of check, then that move isn't legal. And that's what checkmate is, when you haven't got any move that can get the king out of check. So at the end of make move, after we've made the move, we run a check to see if the king of the side that has just made the move is in check or not. And if it is, then we return a zero to say that the move was illegal, otherwise we return a one, or in other words, our true and false constants. So we take as input the position and the move. I'll leave that as an int actually on its own without the const. And the first thing we do is assert, and this is where the checkboard is really needed, is we assert that coming into make move, the position's okay. And we'll call this assert again at the end of make move to make sure after we've done everything, the position is also okay. And then use our from and two square macros to get the from and two squares and take the current side and store this inside side. I've got then some asserts here also to check everything's all right, that the square is on board from from and to, the sides also black or white, and that the piece that's moving on the from square is actually a valid piece because otherwise the move obviously isn't a valid move. So the next stage is to do the first little bit of updating of the history information and the rest of it comes a little bit later but we're going to store already before we do any hashing the position key and notice we store it in our history array at the current his play which at the very first move of the game has a value of zero that should be fairly clear and the history play remember is the number of half moves played in this entire game it's different to the play which is the number of half moves played in the current search so if we had ten, if we had ten moves played in a game when we went to search the current move at the start of each search play is reset to naught and when we start searching you'll see how the play is used and the history play keeps the total half move count of the game because this array then allows us where we store the history info to undo the entire game back to the start if, if necessary so that's the first thing we do there is store the hash key and the next thing we start have to do, having to do is have a look for some special moves so the first one we'll have a look is if our move, when anded with our ampersand flag, returns non-zero, which means it was an ampersand move, and that means that if the side that's making the ampersand capture is white, then we have to remove the black pawn, which will be at the two square minus ten. So we'll be capturing onto the sixth rank, which means we need to move the pawn at the fifth rank. So it's just 2 minus 10. That should be fairly straightforward. And if it wasn't white, then it must have been black. So we remove the pawn at the plus 10. In fact, I'll just very quickly, I hope you don't mind, start up Arena and just uh, talk through that very quickly. So what I'm saying is with an ampersand capture is let's say that this move a2 to a4 had been made here, black could capture on passant here from b4 to a3, and if he did, we would then need to remove the pawn at the 2 square, which is a3, minus 10, because remember going backwards like this is a minus 10. And likewise, if white was capturing, say we played c7, c5, white could now play d5 takes c6, and we'd need to remove the pawn in the minus 10 direction. Sorry, I said that incorrectly for black. I meant plus 10 here. So he captures on a3. We have to remove the pawn at plus 10. 
captures here on C6 and we have to remove the pawn at C5. So that's all that's going on here with the plus 10 and the minus 10. So the next thing we need to look at is if it wasn't an en passant move then it might have been a castling move. And this is why we've already stored the position key here by the way because when we cleared this piece of course we'll have hashed it out. And now we've got if the move was a castling move, so a bitwise and returns non-zero with, non with our castling flag, then we do a switch statement on the two square. And the two square, remember, must be either C1, C8, G1 or G8, depending on the size moving. If it's anything else, then I've got an assert, say, with false in the middle, because it means our castling move had a, an illegal two square, because when we castle, it's got to be one of these four squares that's a two square, depending on the side. And then all I've simply put in, it's so fairly self-explanatory, if we're castling e1, c1, we move the rook from a1 to d1, a8, d8 is black. And if we're doing e1, g1, we move the rook h1 to f1, and with e8, g8, h8, f8. So that should be also fairly simple to understand. The next thing we've got is if the current en passant square is set, then will hash out this en passant square because depending on what move is about to be made we need to, we hash in the new en passant square back in or we don't do anything so we hash this one out and we also now hash the castling permission as well and now I'll take this section here And now we store our information in the history array. So we store the move that was made, the current state of the 50 move rule, the current en passant square, and the castle permission. And here we use, as I explained in a couple of videos ago, our castle permission array to update the castle permission so that if a rook or king has moved, then we'll remove the respective castle permission from our castle perm. And we set the en passant to no square, and we hash then back in the new state of the castling permission. So I hope you follow that. We hash out the current state, the state then gets adjusted here, it might actually stay the same, and then hash it back in again. The next thing we need to look at is the 50 move rule and the captured piece. So we say here we get the piece that was captured in the move, if any, and we increment our 50 move rule. Now if something was captured, the captured isn't empty, and we assert first of all of course that the piece is actually a valid piece otherwise we captured something else which is a, a non-piece but some bits were there then we clear this piece from the two square and we reset the 50 move count to zero because when a capture is made it gets reset to zero that should also be fairly clear next thing we have is a couple of simple increments which one is to increment the ply which is used during the search and the other one is to increment the total half move counter, the history play. And remember also that the history play here is used for indexing our history array. So the next thing to do is to look at whether we actually need to set a new one percent square. And if piece was a pawn, and in fact this reminds me now that I have to add something in to our code here as we've got halfway through this I'm sorry I've forgotten to put the piece pawn I think inside our defs I have because it came from some code I've already prepared so we need to add an array in here called piece pawn and in data.c we need to take one of these other arrays here let's take the piece knight copy and paste that above piece knight here and just we need to put the trues in where it's a pawn and here okay good and save all and sorry about that I'd completely forgotten to add that in in the last video because I prepared everything sort of four or five videos in advance to check that all the code actually works bug free so we need this piece pawn array adding so you should have that added now and also in here so we're going to say that if pieces of a pawn type moving from the from square 
Then we reset the 50 move rule to 0 because when a pawn, also for a pawn move, like a capture move, the 50 move rule gets reset to 0. And now we say that if the move was a pawn start, so for example, if we've gone a2 to a4 like here, then we have to set square a3 as the en passant square. So we set the square at our from square, a2 in this case, plus 10, which makes a3. And I've got an assert here to say that the rank of the en passant square should be on the third rank, as you can see here. Otherwise, it's been an illegal pawn start move. And otherwise, the position must be black in the else here. So we do it at the from minus 10. So if it's c7, c5, we've got from is c7, minus 10 takes us on to c6. And we'll assert again that the rank on the en passant square is now rank 6. And as we've set our en passant square, we now hash in this en passant square. So the next step, finally, now we've cleared all of our pieces that have been captured off, and we don't have any problems with the clear piece and add piece functions, we can move our piece on the board. So if we captured something that's been cleared out the way, and we can move our piece. Of course, if we took did this section after the move piece, we would move, say, um, a queen, say, to b4, but if, say, the queen had captured something on b4, we would then clear a piece on the two square, the b4, and we'd actually clear the queen off. So you have to be a little bit careful that the order of these is correct. So here, finally, we move our piece that's being moved in the move. And now we're nearly done. We just need to look now at whether we promote it, which is the last sort of tricky bit. So we get the promotion piece using our promoted macro. And if it's not empty, then I'm saying here, assert that it is a piece and also assert that it's not a pawn because we can't be promoting to pawn. So this is asserting that it is a valid promotion piece. Then we clear the piece first, and this is critical on the two square. So this will be the pawn has moved to the eighth rank, is now cleared off. And now we add in the piece that we've promoted to on the two square. Of course, if you did it the other way around again, you would end up clearing the piece you promoted to. And finally, we set the king square. So if it was a king that moved, we update the king square in the position. Although, seeing as we've already got this king in the square in the piece list, I think this is going to be redundant. And after I've done this make move and we finished debugging the make move, I'll probably remove this from the uh, position altogether because I don't think we need this anymore. But we'll leave it in for now. And then we've just got some simple things to do to finish off the function. The first thing we do is change the side. Now I've explained in a previous video about how because white and black are 0 and 1, you can simply switch the bit using the exclusive OR. So this simply changes the side from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. And then we hash in the side. And now because we've made all our moves and changed everything on the board, we call a, to an assert on the checkboard again to check that all our piece lists, arrays and everything match up. And now we've got one last thing to do. We say that if square is attacked by the current side to move, so the new side to move, so if this was making a white move, this side would now be black. And if the square of the side that did the move, because remember side here isn't the current side to move after this side change, it's side that we set to the side that made this move in make move up here. So we say if the side that did the moves, king square, is attacked by the new side to move, then obviously the person, the side that moved, left their king in check, and therefore we take back the move, this take move line here, which I'll comment out because we haven't got the take move function yet, and we return false. Otherwise, we return true, and everything was OK. So I'll just type make here and see if we get any fun and games. Good, everything compiles. And that's it for explaining and walking through the make move function. It's quite a bit of code. It's actually not too complicated. It's just a question of getting everything in the right order and making sure that the counters and everything are updated correctly. The more critical source of bugs is actually in the move piece, add piece, and clear piece functions. So in the next video, this will go through the take move function, which you'll be glad to know is a mirror of the make move, but a lot shorter. 
and then we'll finally be ready the video after that to start testing our move generator and you'll see actually what we've been building towards so thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube